I'd never heard of anybody with depression. As soon as the doctor diagnosed me, you know, we did a heap of research and, you know, I could tick every box. My name's Hannah Stone, I'm 22, and I live in Charters Towers in North Queensland. We had a great childhood. Yeah, everything I remember from when we were Younger was always really happy and positive and I remember everything really fondly. Hannah as a child was, was quiet, shy, compassionate, e also extremely kind and generous. When I started grade 12, everything seemed to get a little bit harder. I wasn't so much struggling with the work, but just struggling with... I never wanted to go to school anymore. I, um, I didn't, I didn't want to see my friends. It just started to become all too hard to make any sort of a, a simple decision. Plus her moods became very erratic. I put it down to being a teenager. It was a real struggle to get out of bed in the morning. Horrible thoughts started entering my mind. All of a sudden I found that I didn't want to live anymore. Life wasn't worth it. Everything was too hard. I was just at, just at my end. Then I had no idea what was, what was wrong with me, why I was feeling this way. You know, and that, that brought on more guilt because you know, there was no reason why I should be so low. Like I've just had everything that I've ever wanted. But it was just a slow, gradual decline, pulling more back into herself, going out less. I started cutting myself and that confused me just as much as well. Um, you know, I had no idea why I was doing it and I, I never, even, I don't know how the thought even entered my mind to, to cut myself, to hurt myself. But it just felt like I was in so much emotional pain that I had to match it with physical pain. If I could feel real hurt on the outside, it'd make me feel more even that I could just match it. One day we were going to school Mum was taking us to school and I, something happened and I couldn't do something and it was, you know, I, was, I think it was something like I kicked my toe or I couldn't, I couldn't do up my shoelace or, or something like that and I just fell in a heap on the floor and was just crying hysterically and, and I said, I said, what, what is wrong with me? What am, I, what am I doing? Why am I like this? What's wrong with me? And that's when Mum said, right, we're going to the doctor. Hannah asked me to go in with her and Hannah could say nothing, so I started it. <laughs> and I just basically said what had happened. She was not coping, she wasn't functioning. I couldn't speak, I just was crying. And I think she pretty much just said, you know, s straight away, depression and, and severe anxiety. On the last day of grade 12, I made a speech that I'd completed grade 12 while suffering from depression. I think she started it by saying, I'm not a sports star, I'm not um, an A-grade student, um, I'm no one special at all. And, and she said, but my name is Hannah Stone and I suffer from depression. A lot of people still didn't know, the students didn't know, and a lot of the classmates didn't either. You know, they just thought I was sick and was at home or I was bludging. I just wanted to let people know that, you know, that I came out on top. I've never felt so emotional, so... It was a huge moment for all of our family and virtually the whole hall were in tears and were really, really touched. I got a standing ovation from, from my Year 12 class and you know, half the students and, and half the audience. That would have been the most exhilarating moment of, of Hannah's life, I think, at that stage. It was 
after being in such a pit, it just pushed her onto a high. After I finished school, I wasn't really sure what direction I was headed in. I know that I definitely needed some time off, so I got a couple of jobs and, and started saving some money and then I found myself in Africa. Neither of us ever thought to stop her because well, we'd already decided that you can die in your own backyard or in your own bedroom and that... And I also felt that by telling her, I don't think you're up to this or you can't do this, would have been really, really wrong. Even if I actually felt that, I couldn't say it to her. So we, we let her go. It was a, a three month trip in Kenya, in Africa. We did things like work in orphanages, in baby homes. It made me feel that, that I was achieving something, that I was helping somebody else. I loved every single moment of it. Hello, I'm speaking. I absolutely love my job and I love the people that I work for. I think I'm in a good space now. There's a lot of love in my life and there's so much out there to do and to see and to love and, and to cry about. I'm really glad I'm here and I'm glad that Five years ago, it didn't end. And I think that I love life. Depression is just something that I live with. It's not who I am, and it doesn't def define me as a person. It's just a part of my life, and it's just something that I manage. I think once you've accepted that, things get a little easier. You'll 